In spring of 2011, Debbie and I took our most exotic trip yet. We saw sights that were beautiful, bought trinkets that were unusual, learned skills that challenged us, met people who intrigued us, ate food that scared us. All the while, we were entertained, mesmerized, awed, <laughs> crowded, exercised, and immersed. As I like to do, I chronicled it all when I got home, preparing essays and slideshows for my website. This is a compilation of the images I showed there. I hope you enjoy it. Flip! Wow! Everybody say hi. Hi! Hi! Go to China! Hello and welcome to the China Blog. This is Jeff Kidd and I'm with my wife Debbie Kidd. Say hello. Hello. And what we're doing here is chronicling our nine-day trip to China. We took a group of kids uh, from Beaufort High School over and the text portion of these blog entries will really cover some particular aspect of the things that we learned there but uh, these slideshows are going to be more or less a narrative of our trip, kind of our postcard from China uh, to show you some of the things we did and some of the things that we saw. Now, airport shots might not be necessarily the most exciting way to kick this this off, but uh, it's kind of important setting the tone and all for the for the trip. We had some kids who had never flown before, including our son Tommy, uh, and this was kind of an an exciting locale to be visiting as well. Yeah, we've done Europe for many years in Costa Rica. Um, this was kicking it up a notch. Um, there were so many things to consider, like just safety and foods that we eat. The language. The language barrier, the foreignness of the place. Probably more so than any place we, we visited. I lobbied hard for China, uh, and I'm, I'm glad I finally twisted your arm into, into doing this. This is what, your fifth trip with, with some students? Yes, it is. And what you're seeing here, just some shots from our ride in from the airport. Uh, we didn't do a whole lot the first night. We did get a meal at the, air, at the uh, hotel. Uh, and then we hit the streets to kind of walk around the, near the hotel and see some of the street vendors. And we did taste test a little bit of the street food, although some of the meat on a stick had little legs on it. And we'll just leave it at meat. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that was it for our first day. Uh, check in tomorrow and uh, we'll show you a little bit of Tiananmen Square and the Summer Palace, etc., etc. Hello and welcome back to the China Blog. This is Jeff Kidd and uh, we're going to kind of dive right in. This is our first full day in China, but uh, actually it kind of gets off to a slow start for you, Deb, uh, because you spent some time in a Chinese hospital. Uh, so you're not in some of these early pictures of the Summer Palace that you're looking at here, um, but you get to join us a little bit later in the day. Uh, but this was a good uh, introduction to some of the Chinese people. I mean, the places we're visiting are tourist spots, not just for foreigners, but for the people in China. A lot of them never seen Westerners before. So uh, they had a good time uh, kind of sidling up to our kids and taking pictures with them. And uh, uh, I think some of them have never seen, uh, never seen Westerners and never seen particularly our African American kids. They were really popular. Um, but these are some of the things we saw. The Summer Palace was really, was really beautiful. I wish you'd been there, hon. But Me too. Uh, <laughs> um, here we're getting some Tai Chi lessons. We'll let you kind of watch this. We got a little video here. And uh, we were kind of gathering a crowd, actually, some, some people coming by and watching us here. Uh, Alex Simmons uh, 
gets a little pat on the rear, uh, encouragement from our instructor, but uh, they spent a lot of time with us doing this. This was a lot of fun. I think the kids really enjoyed it and got a little exercise. It was pretty hard. It, one of the things I noticed too as we were touring around was we tended to be besieged by vendors, which was kind of the case everywhere we went. There's a lot of stuff for sale in China. Um, here you see Tommy uh, buying a panda hat, which he really needed. Uh, but uh, everything in China seems to end with a with a sales pitch. Uh, here's another shot of a kind of a goofy looking vendor. Um, just a couple shots from the Pearl Factory that we went to. Uh, I was doing some serious guilt buying because Debbie, you weren't with us. You were at the hospital that morning. There's an essay in here about that. But uh, here at Tiananmen Square, we'll get a couple of shots from the hospital. But this is where you rejoin us. Yeah, Paige, Cambria, and I were pretty proud of ourselves because we had had to just take off on our own and find our way to the hospital, but it all worked out fine, and then we made it back to the square where we were able to get a little taste of what China felt like for us as well. I actually found Tiananmen Square a little bit creepy just because we know as Westerners what happened there, uh, and there was a lot of talk about Mao's mausoleum and almost not a thing about... Uh, about the massacre there and there's a lot of reverence for chairman Mao everywhere you go they speak of him in, in special glorious terms yeah special man special man millions millions killed under his regime um, you're gonna get a glimpse of him too as you enter the uh, forbidden city I think we both kind of had the same sense of the forbidden city it was almost like walking through Epcot Center or something it didn't really feel very old yeah, and I think uh, some of that has to do with it. it wasn't very old. I think a lot of stuff was destroyed during Mao's regime and has since been rebuilt. Um, so I definitely got that, that sense in, in several places. Uh, one of the kind of the weird things you'll see coming up here in just a second, uh, this is actually a single piece of marble, by the way, uh, carved out in the staircase, um, but is kind of the their willingness to desecrate their own monuments. I guess desecration is a bit strong. But here's a kid that's clearly behind like a roped off area, and the kid and his parents have got him posing. There'll be another kid. This kid is not supposed to be there. He's just climbing all over a, a national treasure, and we kind of saw a lot of that. I'd like to see somebody try that at Lincoln's Memorial. Another thing that I found kind of uh, that I didn't expect was that uh, you, you know going into communist country, I expected to see the commissars and the police all about. Actually, I was not terribly impressed by the discipline. Though. There's a guy who's not even like wearing uniform shoes, and these guys are all looking around, kind of just being dopey, really. Uh, I didn't get that kind of austere sense. Uh, no, there. a lot of them, their uniforms were wrinkled and. It was clear that they were more like security guards than really soldiers. Here's some, some shots from the uh, Imperial Garden, uh, the Concubine Garden. Uh, the Empress's Garden. Yeah, everybody's got a garden there. This was getting kind of late in the day and I was getting hungry, uh, which is good because uh, what you're going to see uh, next, uh, and this is kind of on our way out of the garden, uh, heading to eat some Peking duck. And I was really looking forward to this little culinary experience. In fact, we watched a whole documentary about the making of Peking duck before we went. Yeah, it's quite a process they go through to become Peking ducks. Unfortunately for me, I had quite a lot of trouble with uh, using the chopsticks, so resorted to the fingers. Yeah, there was a lot of that. I tried my best, but uh, I think we wound up with Western utensils uh, quite a bit, so... Good into the day, we get a iconic meal, and then we're going to go to one of the icons of China the next day. And we'll show you the Great Wall tomorrow. Hello and welcome back to the China Blog on day four of our trip. You're seeing some shots here from our ride from the hotel to the Great Wall. And guess what that is? I don't know what. Ping Pong Stadium. And that's an amusement park. A knockoff amusement park. It's supposed to look like Disneyland, but it uh, I think it would it foreclosed on it. So we get to the wall. It's a really uh, cold day. And uh, also maybe kind of the first place where I really feel like the crush of people. There are just a lot of, there's a lot of humanity there. 
Babe, what? we are at the Great Wall. Hello, it's very nice. It's very chilly out here. There's some kind of Cliff Clavin facts about the Great Wall. It's been referred to as the world's longest apartment uh, building because in some of the rural areas where it crumbled, the peasants used to gather up the bricks and build their homes with it. It's been called the world's longest cemetery because uh, the workers who built it, uh, when they died, they chucked them in the middle. One thing to remember is that it's not one single wall, but several pieces of the wall that began being linked up by Emperor Qin Shi Huang. And he, of course, unified China, and we'll see a lot more of his handiwork in Xi'an when we uh, go to visit the terracotta warriors. In this next segment, you'll see a lot of pictures of the Chinese minorities. They're very proud of their 56 ethnicities in their country. It seems that people like to just dress up, and that's their job. You know, put on a show for the tourists. So we leave the Great Wall uh, and head out for tea ceremony, but we get to see some neat architecture in uh, Beijing. And uh, you see on your right side, on your left side, this pillar and a red color pillar. They symbolize five, six nationalities in China. We also made the bus driver make a little special stop to see the water cube and the bird's nest, which uh, people would recognize from the 2008 uh, Summer Olympics. <laughs> We were told not to drink the water cold in China, so it was quite comforting to know we were going to have hot tea. There's a lot of uh, pomp and circumstance and ceremony surrounded uh, with, with the tea ceremony, but uh, one of my favorites was the uh, pee pee man, and I'm not an idiot. I know this is a contrivance for the tourists, but uh, you pour your uh, hot water over uh, pee pee man, and if he pees, you're ready to make some tea. One of the really cool things about this trip is that we hit both ends of the transportation sec uh, spectrum. Uh, later in Shanghai, you'll see where we got to ride a bullet train or the uh, magnetic levitation train. But here, we take a rickshaw ride. We go old school, kicking it through the hutong, uh, old school in a rickshaw. <laughs> The word hutong actually means alleyway, but it's synonymous with the old neighborhoods that they surround. Uh, as you can see, some of them are being rebuilt, but many of them are being torn down in Beijing. Even though we were actually tourists riding in the rickshaws, you did feel like you got a sense of what daily life in the Hutong village was like. The rickshaw ride uh, ended at our dinner destination, which was uh, a lady's home, uh, a 200-year-old home, as a matter of fact, uh, in the Hutong. And uh, somehow she squeezed us all in, 26 of us in her uh, living room around three tables, and we had a authentic dinner and another authentic cultural experience. This was a good way to wind down our last night in Beijing. Uh, we do get to visit a school the next morning and then we're off to Xi'an and we'll tell you more about it tomorrow. Hi, 
Hi, welcome to the China blog. Uh, we're going to tell you a little bit about day five. Uh, we fly to Xi'an on this day, but not before we make a stop at a school in Beijing and see a Monday flag raising ceremony. There are several things that struck me about this visit. Um, one, I was impressed with their uniforms. Looks like the kids would enjoy wearing those rather than what we have to wear at our school. Two, uh, the boys were lined up in front of the girls. And three, they were really tall. Yeah, in fact, we're going to see tall come into play here in just a second. Uh, the kids got to kind of mingle with them after the ceremony, and then they rolled out a basketball. <laughs> now, I'm sorry to say, uh, I don't think the Americans fared too well in that game. Yeah, well, I know Jay did her best, and I think it's interesting, though, again, that the boys and girls are generally separated in China. They don't like physical contact. Uh, amongst the kids, so I, I wondered how they felt about our young lady playing with them in the first place. But it all seemed to go well. She starred. She did. She was probably our top performer. Then we get a tour of the school, and frankly, I was pretty surprised. I didn't expect to see a school that was uh, such a nice facility and so well equipped. Yeah, honestly, I wondered if that's the way all Chinese schools are, or if we were just getting the tour of the best school around. Yeah, I kind of wondered the same thing. Uh, this was really kind of struck me as part school and part museum. They had a nice library, a nice gym. They had displays of history, de geology, plants and animals. Yeah, it's kind of neat uh, shots coming up here. They had a bunch of uh, taxidermy displays. You're also uh, going to see a shot here uh, in a second of an observatory that they had at the school. And Debbie, I know you like... Uh, going doing these school visits when we go abroad. Yeah, overall, I think it was definitely a highlight. Just wish we'd had a little more time to mix with the kids. But we had a plane to catch. And then it was on to Xi'an, and really, I learned a lot just looking out the window of the bus from the airport to where we're going and to see a different landscape and um, a lot of new development, although Xi'an's really kind of considered a, a historical center. Yep, it seems like Xi'an is in a giant hurry to catch up with the rest of China. Yeah, you, know, you kind of get a sense that uh, Xi'an is ad-libbing to the water heaters that they put on top of their houses to uh, the way they string cable and wires on their utility poles. Now, our, our first stop in Xi'an was at the Big Wild Goose Pagoda. And Buddhism was, was introduced into China uh, really because of the silk trade um, and the, the travelers that came in from India. There's kind of an interesting story about how the Big Wild Goose Pagoda got its name. Yeah, apparently the Buddhists were hungry and couldn't find any meat to buy. Uh, one monk prayed that maybe Buddha would give us some food. And about that time, a big wild goose fell out of the sky. So, what are you going to name your pagoda? The Big Wild Goose Pagoda. Very creative. Now, there are, tend to be a lot of tourists at these uh, religious sites, but... I thought it was really neat how this was very active and lots of people there are actually praying using the pagoda. Yeah, in a lot of cases they're praying for money. Yep, yeah, or a long life, which from the looks of it, this poor bird is not going to have. Kind of a, an odd spectacle to see a caged bird hanging from a tree. I thought this was one of the prettier sites we visited in Xi'an, and uh, after that we're back to our hotel and a hot pot dinner. Kind of uh, interesting, the, the food was, very, was good, I enjoyed this meal. We also met a bunch of people from uh, from the low country here. Uh, there was a traveler from Yemisee, another from Charleston that, that we met here. The accommodations left a wee bit to be desired though. You're gonna get a good view from our uh, hotel room window and uh, the mushrooms that they grew in our bathroom. We'll leave you with that image.
Welcome to day six of the China blog, and this is a big day, uh, our first full day in Xi'an, and we visit the Terracotta Warriors, and this is one of the more impressive things that uh, that we've seen. Now, a little bit of background. Uh, we talked earlier in the, uh, when we went to the Great Wall about the Emperor Qin Shi Huang. He was the first uh, emperor to unify uh, China, and then he quickly set about his sights on ruling the afterlife, too. And... Uh, the Terracotta Warriors were the army he intended to take with him into the afterlife. The figures date from about 210 BC, uh, but uh, they were only discovered in 1974 by some local farmers near the mausoleum of the first emperor. Uh, the figures include warriors and chariots and horses. It's believed there are about 8,000 figures, but uh, most of them are still buried, and this is a uh, part museum and part archaeological dig. Uh, that, that goes on to this day. One thing I thought was interesting is that there were guards trying to prevent us from taking photos of the archaeologists at work. They didn't try very hard though. Didn't work very well, did it? No. We also got to go see uh, an IMAX presentation um, and uh, I, got, I bought a book and this is the farmer who supposedly discovered the Terracotta Warriors. I'm gonna take him on a word that that was actually him and not somebody they uh, pulled out of the countryside. But uh, again, this is another uh, big uh, uh, tourist spot, not only for foreigners, but uh, for the people who live here. This is a really big deal to the, to the Chinese people, and I would say along with the Olympic Games in 2008, this is one of the things that you could tell that they were really, really proud of. One last interesting point, the warriors were originally painted. Uh, and when they unearthed them, they you could still see color in them, but uh, they oxidized and quickly faded. Here's the kneeling archer that you're seeing now. Uh, it's one of the few where some of the color has actually been retained. And here you see one of the restored uh, chariots, uh, one of the more impressive preservation efforts. Now we've worked up a pretty good appetite. We go for a dumpling dinner. Yep, there were four different types, chicken, pork, fish, vegetable, and each shape to look like its contents. And the finale was a dumpling soup. Well, actually the finale was a chicken that had been pounded flat. It was actually really, really good. Uh, but when we looked at the plate, there was a little bit left over. And what do you suppose that was? That is indeed a beak. We all had to pose uh, pretending to eat it. Uh, there's there's Lori, uh, and then we passed it to Craig Bowman, who, I hate to tell you folks, he really ate it. He said it tasted like chicken. Then we're off to an art museum, and uh, there was a, a lot of neat stuff to look at, a lot of, of both older work and some contemporary uh, materials as well. Uh, but really one of the highlights of this was uh, we got to learn a little bit of Chinese calligraphy. And I've got ridiculously bad handwriting as it is, so I was pretty much hopeless in this endeavor. Yeah, me too, but it was interesting to learn the eight different strokes and to try to practice their Chinese writing. I'm surprised. Some of the kids were really good at it, actually. And then they got the bright idea to put Robert to work, and Robert spent a lot of the afternoon uh, writing out uh, our English names of friends and family on, on this paper that we could so we could take it home and, and present it as presents. And then we were off to another museum, the Shanji Museum. Uh, it had uh, many of the displays from the Terracotta Warrior site that, uh, that had been taken there. The museum houses more than uh, 300,000 items that include murals and paintings and pottery and coins and there are a few highlights of the, of the collection too such as the Lantian Man who preceded the Peking Man, uh, a four-footed Shang Dynasty bronze cooking utensil, and a painting of a Tang Dynasty group playing polo. Then it's off to lunch, and uh, really a buffet dinner is probably not terribly enthralling, except I included this because we had some decent pictures of the hostesses who were dressed in uh, Tang Dynasty uh, outfits. From, from there, we returned to the hotel and, and had a pretty relaxing night. Uh, the first time that uh, you and I really had a chance to kind of go walk the streets together since our first night in Beijing because you had spent so much time in the in the hospital with uh, with Paige and Cambria. There are my Fred Flintstones. We got, uh, we got a foot massage and, and walked around outside our uh, hotel. 
Yeah, it was a much needed relaxing evening. The foot massage was awesome. Spent a lot of the night just uh, walking around, watching the traffic, and trying to take some, some nighttime pictures. Yeah, and we also had a little taste of Dunkin' Donuts, Chinese style. Yeah, I always like to get uh, sort of the foreign take on American uh, fast food. And it was the first sweets we'd really had because they don't eat a lot of sweets in China. Time to carb up, though. Tomorrow, Shanghai. Hello and welcome to day seven of the China blog. Today's a little bit short on activities. We flew from Xi'an to Shanghai. This guy uh, entertained us in the airport cutting out uh, paper silhouettes. And as we rode from the airport into the city, it didn't take us long to discover we were about to see the first uh, city in, in China that would really kind of pass as a western city. Shanghai is a trade and banking capital uh, with a, a very modern looking skyline. And that skyline is dominated by the Shanghai uh, World Financial Center, which is also emerged as a tourist attraction because it's got a really high observation deck and a really fast elevator. That's high. That's really meters, not inch. Okay, what are we on? We're on 27? Yeah, yeah my ears are popping. We are speeding the office floor. Ah! Please, please, please. And to the office and to the hotel. Okay, we're going to the hotel. This to the elevator just for sightseeing. Debbie, you looked a little bored. No, I was just a little tired that day. Yeah, now, I said the elevator was fast. It actually covers uh, 10 meters per second. Uh, the building is 101 stories, and uh, it is the tallest in China, uh, including Hong Kong. Uh, I think it's 101 stories, 492 meters tall. It has three observation decks, one of which was constructed to kind of look like a footbridge. <laughs> I don't know about you, Jeff, but when I saw this on the itinerary, I wasn't exactly thrilled, but it turned out to be a pretty awesome spectacle, especially coming from such a small town as Beaufort. Yeah, it wasn't uh, Beaufort Memorial that we were at the top of, was it? Actually, I was geeked from the beginning. I've, I've never been in a building that tall. Uh, I've been to the Sears Tower in Chicago, seen it from the outside, but uh, didn't go in. Just some really stunning views of Shanghai, which has kind of an interesting layout because you have the, the modern side, but then you also have the Bund, which is the colonial uh, area of the city. So this gave us a good, literally a good overview of, of what was to come the next day. Coming up, by the way, you're going to get a look at a building right across the street that's going to surpass uh, the financial center in height when it's completed. Little light on pictures for the rest of this day. Uh, like Debbie said, we were both kind of tired. Uh, we went, got us something to eat. We we did see a really cool acrobat show this night, uh, but I am a chronic rules follower, and we were told not to take pictures in there, so I didn't. Uh, I kind of wish in retrospect I had cheated because uh, we saw some other people taking pictures in there. Nobody stopped them. But anyway, a big day up uh, tomorrow. A lot of shopping in Shanghai, um, and we'll talk about it then. Hello and welcome to day eight of the China blog and this is our first real romp through Shanghai and this was a, a really neat day. We went to the Jade Buddha Temple in the morning and here you're seeing some photos of uh, the sites we saw along the way uh, including a lot of beggars. Yep, it's pretty evident they knew where the tourists were going to be. Don't be an ugly American. Then we go into the temple and this for me was one of the highlights. I thoroughly enjoyed this. The Jai Bu Temple. The first hall in this temple is called the Four Heavenly Kings Hall. According to Buddhism, the Four Heavenly Kings are the general. And we lucked out and we were there uh, for this bi monthly kind of special ceremony that brings out a lot of the local worshippers, and it was really busy and crowded. 
uh, the incense was just the smell of it was overpowering, but also the ash from the incense was just all over the in the air. It looked like uh, it looked like it was snowing, but it was a really really interesting thing to watch. I think we commented about it'd be hard to imagine us in a uh, sitting in a church pew and having a bunch of tourists filing through and snapping pictures, but the kids felt almost irreverent doing it, but it was so neat to be there and see it. Yeah, I felt irreverent too, but I got over it. <laughs> now, Captain Obvious named this uh, temple too. It's uh, called the Jade Buddha Temple because there's two big jade Buddhas, Buddhas there. <laughs> Uh, which you're also not allowed to photograph, and I'm a chronic rules follower, so I didn't. And one of the things I think maybe startled a couple of kids was seeing some of the uh, swastika imagery that's uh, prevalent in Buddhism. In fact, the symbol made its way into Chinese culture uh, through Buddhism, uh, which spread through the Indian subcontinent into China uh, along the Silk Road trade routes. And it's known as the heart seal and represents eternity. Another thing I noticed about this and some of the other religious sites is there seems to be a lot of commerce going on there as well. Uh, I think you had to buy uh, the incense. Somebody's probably making a buck off of that. And the candles. And the candles. And the, and, tea. Uh, the tea. We went through actually another tea ceremony, which was a little anticlimactic because we'd already done one, but the tea was good. I think we did. We wound up buying some uh, from, from this place and still enjoying it. And then, of course, uh, on the way back to the bus, we encounter... Uh, Yet more street vendors, uh, you're never far from, from some of them either. No sale. There were, however, I think several sales at the Silk Factory. Here's our happy little tour guide uh, and slash salesman. Well, he may have been trying to sell us something, but he really taught us a lot about how silk is made as well. Yeah, we got to go inside the factory and, and see its manufacture. And a lot of it, we see some of the machinery, but a lot of it is done by hand uh, and from you know, kind of picking out the uh, the silkworms to the ladies who were... They had two processes really going on. They had the fibers, and then they were also making batting to fill silk comforters. They had all kinds of silk products there, obviously, not just the, the comforters and the and the cloths, but uh, shirts, uh, ties, robes, underwear. Uh, then we step outside and get another sales pitch. This guy was more successful than the than the last one. I think uh, we bought some we bought some product from him. And from there, we went on to the bun, which actually I was a little disappointed when I got back and looked at my photos because I had a lot of pictures taken from the bun. Uh, of the of the skyline across the river, but uh, not a lot of pictures of the Bund. The Bund is the area that was built up by the colonials. Um, so it's the older European style buildings on the one bank of the Huangpu River, whereas you see the Pudong side, which is the high rises. Yeah, and actually, I think there are actually height restrictions uh, in in the Bund uh, today. Then we went through a, a tour, and this is kind of unique. Shanghai is one of the few, maybe the only, uh, Chinese city that actually has a Chinatown because Shanghai has, for a long time was uh, held by colonial powers and, and divided up much as, um, as Germany and, and Berlin were uh, after World War II. And what you're looking at here are some pictures from the Yuan Garden, which uh, parts of which date back to the 16th century. The garden's only about uh, five acres, but it was designed in a manner to, to make it feel much more sprawling, much more uh, wide open. Uh, one of the cool little features you'll see here coming up is uh, a little hallway with a bunch of little windows cut through uh, the wall. And each one is uh, framed. The view from outside is framed, so it looks like you're looking at a different landscape each time you, you pass, but you're only walking a couple of feet. That was kind of neat. From there, we went to what was probably the highlight of the trip for some of our shopaholics. That was the knockoff market where you find a lot of, uh, well, knockoffs. But uh, for us, one of the highlights was going on the maglev train, uh, the bullet train. It's powered by big electromagnets and actually hovers above the rail, doesn't actually touch it. Its max speed is about 280 miles per hour, and when you're sitting inside, you don't feel like it. It feels like you're riding in a car because they have specially designed glass so that you won't get motion sick. It costs $1.3 billion uh, U.S. dollars to build, and a little bit of question as to whether it was really worth it. Uh, it's just a one-line train that runs from the airport to the city, 
and uh, it can do it really fast, but it's about eight bucks a trip, and there aren't a whole lot of commuters on it. Then at night uh, to Nanjing Road, a very swank, very western part of the city, and we're kind of starting to get the sense that our trip's over. In general, Shanghai just went by way too fast, and in retrospect, I just wish we had a little more time. China went by way too fast. I could, I want, I'm looking forward to uh, to going back. Me too. Hello, welcome to day nine of the China blog. The sad day. We're going home. Uh, actually, you'll see a couple of pictures here of us giving a gift to our tour guide, Robert. Uh, he really seemed to appreciate it. And one of the things we always notice, Debbie, is that you kind of build a rapport with your tour guide, and the kids just really kind of get a little torn up when they have to leave them behind. Oh, I did too. We were very attached to Robert. Yeah, I think we wanted to put him in our suitcase, and if we had forced the issue, we probably could have. <laughs> uh, but uh, we've got a long day of travel ahead of us, but uh, I'm going to kind of let uh, Robert uh, have the floor here. And uh, are you happy this time? Yeah. In China? Yes. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. Wonderful. And are you satisfied with this trip in China? Yes. Yeah? Thank you. And thank you very much for cooperation with me and also understanding my job. And I really appreciate it. And also you gave me your school t-shirt. And I've been guided, I uh, accept a lot of gifts, but this is only for time. And I have the school t-shirt. I really appreciate it. And thank you very much. When we hit the ground in Charleston, the first thing I saw out of my window was signs welcoming us home. And after traveling with them, I can understand why they were so happy to have them back. This was a really good group, well-behaved kids. They were wonderful, and their parents were as well. And uh, they really seemed to enjoy the experience, and we hope you enjoyed the experience too and got a little bit of taste of it with uh, the China blog. Thanks for watching. <laughs>